There's one other higher order method that I want to illustrate for doing data processing because this one winds up being uh, remarkably useful or at least something closely related to it in the Spark world but the idea is very similar and it's very powerful. So once again we have these temperatures we have these these temperature records here for different days and what I want to calculate in this case is I want to know for example the average temperature by month across the entire data set. Now this data set goes from the 1800s to after 2000. This is a large data set and what I want to do is for each month know how high is the average temperature and of course we'd expect that for example January is going to be cold and July is going to be warm because this location is in the the northern hemisphere it would be nice to see that and see exactly what those values are and once again we want to do this in a way that is fairly efficient you could write a loop that goes and counts from 1 to 12 go through each of the months and then for each one of those filter it down and take you know and, and then map and then do an average off of that okay, once again many passes and we'd be doing that work 12 times however there is a high order method that is perfectly suited for this type of work and that is it is called group by and so I'm going to make a collection called month groups and I will take our data and I'm going to call group by on the month. Now it's worth taking a second to, I have an extra close parentheses there, to look at the type of the value we get back. We have a map from int to array of temp data. So this is something where I give it an integer, which should be the month, should be a value between 1 and 12, and it gives me back an array that stores all of the days for that month. Okay. Given that, we should be able to run through and let's say go back to the I want to have a an average temperature. Okay. We'll call monthly temp. And I'm going to take the average of the high temperatures. So how could I do this? Well, I need to run through this collection and for each element in this collection for every month I need to produce a new output that probably still needs to have the number of the month and then it also needs to have some average well this idea of I run through a collection and I produce a new value for all of the old ones is exactly what the map method does okay. now one thing to note about the map method on so here let me just do T rocket T. This would be a very silly map here, but that's enough that we can hover over this. Note that T is a tuple. Okay? When you map or for each or filter on a map type, the value that is passed in is a tuple. Uh, often I like to pattern match on tuples, so as I did in the case of this fold, I am going to write a case here and I'll call it M and days, M for month, and then days for my array of different days. And what I want to spit out for this is I need to keep that month around. And I'm going to spit this out as a tuple, and I'm going to use the arrow. In fact, maps, these associative data uh, values, are exactly why the arrow exists, because it kind of reads nicely seeing this is the key value and then whatever value is stored under that key goes on the other side of the arrow. It's, that's why the syntax is there. So I'm going to take M and I'm going to map it to I want the average temperature for days. Well we've seen that I could do a map on that uh, followed by a, uh, a sum but that's doing this in two passes. I can also probably do this with a fold. Okay, so this will be another example of doing a fold. I could take days dot fold left and the reason why I need a fold and I can't do this with a reduce is because reduce only works with our given type so it'll take it's a collection of temperature data so it has to give me back a whole temperature data. I don't want a whole temperature data. All I want back is a sum of the temperatures that then I can divide by the length. So, 
my fold left starts with a zero value, which in this case is zero. And then I have a function that takes my accumulator, so I'll just call it sum, along with the day, which I've been calling TD, so I'll stick with that. And what it is supposed to do is just add up those two. So I'm going to give back sum plus TD dot Tmax. That's my fold. I can take that and divide by days dot length for arrays at least, calling length as an order one operation. Uh, so this fold left runs through the collection one time. It adds up all of the Tmaxes and gives us back their sum. I divide that by the length of that, and that gives me this collection, which then I could print out. So if I do a print line of monthly temp, I should get something that is reasonably interesting here at the end. There's a map, 5 is 66, 10 is 65, 1 is 16. I, technically this has the information that I wanted, but it's really not the best presentation. For one thing, I'd really like to see the months in order. Okay. But this map is using some data structure, most likely a hash map, and I don't have control over the order here. So what I'd like to do to make this print out nicely is let's take our monthly temp, and I am going to convert it to a sequence. And once again, this is at this point, this is just a map of int to doubles with 12 entries in it. This is a very small collection. I'm not really all that worried about efficiency and whatnot once I get down to 12 items that are in here. So I'm going to convert that to a sequence. And the advantage there is that I can sort that by underscore dot underscore one. Remember, this is when I convert my map to a sequence, I get back a tuple. You can see that's a tuple of int to double. So I'm sorting it by the int. And then for each of those, I'll print it out. If we run that, now I have the same values, but they are sorted in order by month. So January was 16 degrees Fahrenheit for the average high. By the way, clearly Detroit Lakes is not very warm in, uh, in January. February, March, and it goes up and we hit our high value actually in July for this location and then it goes back down as you go back to December. So this shows you how you can use group by to make a collection that groups things based upon some value. In this case, we grouped it by months, but there are all other types of operations that you might want to group by. And then in this case, I mapped on those to give me some collective value for each one of the groups. Uh, then I used a sort by here to, to print it out nicely. But this group by gives us back a collection that makes it much easier to work on groupings of values, which is often very significant for when we're looking at data. In fact, the big data framework Hadoop was completely uh, set up to work with key value pairs. And we'll see that this key value pair type of approach to things winds up being significant for a lot of our data analysis in Spark as well. And so operations like group by are significant for getting that key value type of association.